The Widow's Lament in Springtime. A poem by William Carlos Williams, 1883-1963. Who is William Carlos Williams? William Carlos Williams was an American poet, writer, and physician closely associated with modernism and imagism. He was born to an English father, although he had lived in America, but he was born to an English father and a French mother. He was raised up there in America. He educated there and he joined the group of Imagis writers which was led by Ezra Pound. He learned how to write poems when he was in high school. He published his first collection of poems. He met Ezra Pound who supported him and helped him to publish his second one. He was not only an Imagist writer, but he objectivist. The poem that we are going to talk about is one of his early poems that are written in Imagist style of writing because in some points of his life, he left the Imagist school or stopped being with this kind of movement. Now I will talk about the poem. From the title The Widow's Lament in Springtime, what does a widow mean? A widow is a woman who lost her husband or her husband has died. Now let's read some lines of the poem. Sorrow is my own yard, where the new grass, flames as it has flamed, often before but not, with the cold fire. After reading these lines, how many speakers are in the poem? It seems that is one speaker. This particular poem is written in the kind of monologue because the speaker is not addressing someone. The poem is not written in the first person. The poet is giving us an idea about what the poem is going to be about. So, it is about the speaker, not in the voice of the speaker, but when he began reading, we can find that it is the voice of the speaker that can give us the whole poem. So, the words that are given in this poem are given in a kind of monologue or what we can call a stream of thoughts, a kind of interior thinking as if the speaker is thinking and telling us of what she thinks of. Can you notice anything unusual in the first six lines? How many sentences do we have here in the first six lines? This is one sentence that runs through six lines. Maybe this is the first technique that we can notice used by Williams. This can add to the way her thoughts are going on in her mind or what is going on in her mind. This is what it is called the stream of consciousness, it is about writing someone's thoughts as they appear in their mind. So, enjambment is a prominent feature of such style because thought come in this way, they do not have these kind of pauses or punctuations or such. Sorrow is my own yard. You know what is a yard? A yard is the area around the house. Sorrow is her own yard. What do we have here if you want to analyze this line? How can a yard be described as sorrow or sadness? Give it a name? What is the term of the figure of speech which is used in the first line? It is a metaphor. So, she compares her yard or the area that surrounds her yard as sorrow itself. She describes the degree of her sadness or grief or such. In that yard, what do we have? Where the new grass, flames as it has flamed, often before. We can think of her as looking at the yard, seeing that yard or the area around her house in the garden as full of sorrow, full of sadness. Usually the yard or the garden around the house is the place where people can feel comfortable and enjoy sitting in, but now she describes it as full of sorrows and the grass in that yard is described as flames. How can you find similarity between flames and grass? Why do you think she compared grass to flames? The meaning of flames is fire. How do you think these two words or these two objects are similar? In which way? Usually when you think of finding out a similarity between two things, think of different aspects like colors, movement, and shape. You can find all these here, grass and flames. The brightness of the grass could be similar to the brightness of a fire. The brightness, its shape and its movement are similar to the flames when the fire is moving. Why did she choose fire to describe the grass? Of course because she is sad, because it cannot make her feel happy when she looks at the garden or the yard, but it makes her feel more sorrowful or it increases her grief and such. Flames as it has flamed, often before but not, with the cold fire. That closes round me this year. 
that fire that she describes is not the fire that is in its real sense which is hot fire, but she describes that fire as cold. Again this is to describe the intensity of her sadness, loss of her husband. That closes round me this year. This refers to fire that surrounds her or it is getting closer and closer towards her this year. By this year, we can understand that it is not a long time ago that she lost her husband. It is like a year or something. This is the description of her situation now because we can notice the present tense and then we have a strong shift into the past. 35 years. I lived with my husband. It is as if she was thinking of her situation in the preset and suddenly she remembers how long she lived with her husband, it was not a short time, it was like 35 years. Again this can help us to understand the degree of her sadness. Then she shifts to the present again. The plum tree is white today, with masses of flowers. We have a short sentence here, but it is a concrete image that is an abstract idea. The Imagist school of writing brings certain images in order to express a certain idea or abstract information. So, here again we have a different one just like the description of her sorrows, the description of the grass as flames. We have here the trees that surrounds here. I'd like you to notice here in this poem the symbols, the metaphors that are used are not used in the conventional ways because we agreed before that the modernist way of writing, the imagist way of writing is not using that decorative language which is full of figurative language or figures of speech, but here they are used in a very special way, they are inverted. What we are used to is that such symbols and such metaphors are used to describe happiness like the grass, the garden, the trees and all these images. I cannot say symbols because not all of them are symbols, so, let's say images. The plum tree is white today, you know the association of the white color. It is usually associated with death. But now the plum tree is covered with flowers and usually when we have description of flowers on trees, it is something that is pleasant, but here in this poem, it is described as something that reminds her of her sadness. Masses of flowers. Notice the repetition. The repetition here also adds to the degree of her griefs. Maybe it reminds her of the funeral time or the time of death. Load the cherry branches and color some bushes, yellow and some red. Everything was colorful around her, but this cannot bring happiness or joy to her, but rather it brings her sadness because of her loss. But the grief in my heart is stronger than they. This is the statement that can tell us how she feels when she sees all these flowers and trees. When she sees them, she feels much sadder and sorry of this loss. For though they were my joy, Formerly, today I notice them. And turn away forgetting. Formerly means in the past. They were source of happiness and joy when I used to see them in the past when she was with her husband, but now they remind her of loss more than her joy. When she sees such scenes of trees and of flowers, she turns away forgetting about her joy in the past. She does not enjoy looking at them. We move to the last part of the poem which is about her son and what her son told her and we go back again in the end of the poem to the expression of her feelings. Today my son told me, that in the meadows, at the edge of the heavy woods, in the distance, he saw. The meadows are the green areas. Until the word forgetting, we have the end of her description of her thoughts or the expression of her feelings. I wish that you can notice the gradual change of her place. At the beginning, we could imagine her in her house looking at the yard and then we have trees and flowers and towards the end we have the description of the woods. The woods means the forest. It is usually something not close to houses, it is something far away from houses. She describes them as heavy woods. This gives us a signal of the theme that we will see at the end of the poem. In the distance, he saw, trees of white flowers. He saw trees of white flowers. Again we have white flowers repeated here. It is repeated for how many times? She cannot see flowers as part of sprint time, of happiness or joy, but rather she sees them as something that reminds her of her sadness, death and such. I feel that I would like. From this line, 
we understand that kind of glimpse of hope or the beginning of her joy, but unfortunately, it is not so because she continues saying, and fall into those flowers. And sink into the march near them. To go there. And fall into those flowers. And sink into the marsh near them. She wishes to go there not to enjoy the scene or sitting there or whatever, but she wishes to sink into the ground. Sinking into the ground is a symbol of death or a wish for death of going to her husband or joining her husband. The poem again ends not with a hope or not a conclusion or a consolation or something that can tell us that she is okay with the idea of mortality, but she wishes to die in order to join her husband. If you want to trace the change of her place throughout the poem, we can notice this could signify or hint at this idea at the end of the poem which is the suicidal idea, her wish to die. If you move from the yard of her house, then we have trees that she described somewhere away from her house and then in the distance, the heavy woods or the forest that she described in distance when she wishes to sink into the ground, which means the idea of suicide and such. Just like any imagist poem, it is easy, simple symbol written in free verse. There is no clear pattern or rhyme scheme, but it has its own technique, the technique of using metaphors in special way, a way which is different from metaphors that are used in other poems that describes springtime. If you notice in the title, you have springtime, the metaphors, the symbols, the description of the flowers, we can call it an elegy but it is not similar to other elegies that we knew before like John Milton's elegies in the 17th century or Whitman's elegies such as when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed, they described part of nature in the elegies, but we notice that in their description, we have confession, and we have their satisfaction about the idea of mortality, death and such. But in this one, it is as if the speaker cannot find it acceptable to have her husband dead and she wishes to die. We cannot see any consolation, we cannot see any kind of hope in the poem. The poem is a kind of interior monologue, she expresses her thoughts inside her mind to us by using such concrete images of trees, flowers, the colors and the fire or the flames. How is the grass similar to fires? We said in its movement, bright color and such. How about cold fire? What do we have here in the word cold fire? In poetry, what do we call this? When fire is described as cold, what do we call this? We said sorrow is my own yard is a metaphor. Grass flames can be a metaphor again because she did not say grass is like flames. We have here cold fire. Fire is described as cold which is something opposite to fire. When we have two contradictory words that describe one thing, we call it oxymoron. These are the main techniques that are used in the poem to describe the widow's feelings. Also the tone of the poem is a flat one. If we could take that impression from the inverted use of the metaphors and imagery in general, they are used in an opposite way from what we used to. As we said, in the beginning we have enjambment. And in the last six lines, we have enjambment as well. In the beginning, enjambment is used to signify the intensity of her sorrows and sadness. But in the end, we could say something different which is the idea of death in her mind. It can give us a sense of the idea of death in her mind, especially when she said I feel that I would like and fall and sink. We have repetition as well. Through repetition we could have that kind of idea focused on. We have the repetition of flowers, the repetition of the word years, and the repetition of masses of flowers. The tone. It is deadening tone, flat tone. It is not a tone of someone who is excited because she is sad. It is not the tone of someone who is very sad just like what we use to see in other elegies, but the description of concrete images can tell us about her sadness, but the tone is unemotional, it is deadening. In the end, we can find this description or the hint of suicide. Now, I am going to talk about the poet shortly. As we said, in our description of William's life, he met with Ezra Pound and Ezra Pound was his model. As we said, in our description of William's life, he met with Ezra Pound and Ezra Pound was his model. He helped him publish his second collection. So, we can find the imagist nature of poem here.
but again we have him as an objectivist in which he uses these images with a flat tone because he believed that things are ideas. Williams believed that things are ideas. That is why he is using a combination of things here in the poem in order to tell us these ideas. Williams as well believed that poems are like pictures. We can notice in the red wheelbarrow such a notion or such a belief. And he also believed that poems are machines made of words. What does that mean? They work by themselves and give us the meaning. In such description of concrete images, we get the meanings without any interference of the author by giving more adjective or descriptive words. This is all about this poem. Please, do not forget to click notification bell, like, share, comment and subscribe my channel.